Today we'll be having a case discussion on infertility. My name is Dr. Sheila Balakrishnan and I'm the former professor, Department of Reproductive Medicine and OBG, Government Medical College, Trivandrum. I'm Sri Lakshmi, postgraduate in OBG. Okay, we'll start. Okay, ma'am. Uh, <coughs> my case is a 25-year-old Mrs. X, hailing from Nayatingara. She is a graduate in Malayalam lit literature, working as a teacher in a private school. She is married to Mr. Y, 29-year-old graduate, now working as an accountant in a private company belonging to lower middle class. The couple have been married and staying together for one and a half years and now anxious to conceive. Okay. This couple presented with inability to conceive despite re of regular unprotected intercourse for past one and a half years. There is no prior history of evaluation or treatment for the same. She has history of irregular cycles since Menarch. Uh, cycle length was 45 to 60 days duration. Uh, she has no history of heavy, ble uh, men uh, heavy bleeding during periods, painful menses or intermenstrual bleeding. She consulted a gynecologist with the same complaints <coughs> four years after Menarch at age of 17 years. Her blood tests were done which the result of which was informed to her as normal and uh, she was advised to take some tablets but she didn't follow up. She had a history of uh, excessive facial and body hair growth since 17 years of age. She noticed that she had started gaining weight since 19 years of age. She, uh, now then she developed a history of heavy bleeding during menses for two cycles since October of last year. Uh, in two cycles on of October and January, uh, it lasted for five to six days. She used to change forcefully sock pads during the second and third day of her periods. It is associated with irregular cycles once in every two to three months and not associated with the passage of clothes or painful menses. There was no history of intermenstrual bleeding or postcoital bleeding. She consulted a gynecologist at this time with the same symptoms five months back uh, for which she was advised to reduce weight and take traffic tablets to control bleeding and was referred to fertility clinic. Okay, before we go on, just a few things, it's been, uh, you, I mean, you would like to uh, start the investigation, isn't it? Why? Yes, ma'am. Because, uh, she's already because she, uh, yes, ma'am, she has been married for one and a half years. Suppose this particular lady or uh, this couple was married only for six months. Would you start investigation? Yes, ma'am, because she has history of irregular cycles. Excellent. So it warrants an in yes. uh, investigation. Because she's, you know that she's not unlikely to be ovulating and those yes. who she would require okay, the same. Exactly. Now, you said she has irregular cycles. What would you say is irregular cycles? Ma'am, according to HJ uh, guidelines, it is uh, after three years post menarche mm -hmm. irregular uh, cycles means less than 21 days or more than 35, 35 days, days of days. duration. Yes. And uh, but according to FIGO, it is less than 24, 5 days or more than 38 days. Yeah. So, more, anyway, she qualifies to yes, have irregular circles. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, if it is nearer to the menarche, it will be different, isn't yes, it? Yes, Then what would you take? Uh, if uh, within one year of menarche, uh, irregular cycles is physiology. It is considered normal, absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. So, in this lady, do you think she qualifies to have irregular periods? Yes, madam. Mm -hmm. uh, because what? her cycle length was 45 to 60 days initially. Now, it is 2 to 3 months, 60 to 90 days. Mm -hmm. So, she so is what is the definition of irregular periods? Um, according to HJ uh, guidelines, it is irregular periods less than 21 days or more than 35 days when it is 3 years after menarche. Yeah. Uh, in FIGO, uh, it is less than 25 or more than 38 days. Uh, okay. There is a slight disparity between Figo and Ashray, but yes. more or less it is the same, isn't yes, it? Ma yeah, that is important. And uh, you mentioned there is no history of heavy bleeding during periods, isn't it? Um, initially, she had no history of heavy bleeding. Okay. Yes, ma'am. But, but, uh, but uh, yes. later on. Uh, okay, I will come to that. Yeah. Is intermenstrual bleeding, do you think, occurs with this type of, uh, you know, um, bleeding? It is not usually associated with anovulatory infertility, but other causes like cervical no, it, fibroid. It is not as, okay, you, uh, what type of bleeding can you get? You can get a period of amenorrhea followed mm. by irregular bleeding. bleeding. So, yeah. that can happen, isn't it? Yes. So, not typically intermenstrual bleeding. What causes, typically causes intermenstrual bleeding? Submucosal fibroid, mm -hmm. uh, polyps. Polyps, uh, all those or, things. Anything, uh, any surface sex. lesion or uh, pre-malignant or malignant lesions of the cervix, isn't it? Yes. So, you said that she consulted a gynecologist and everything was normal. Then you said she has excessive hair growth since yes, the age of 13. Okay, yes, 17, 17 years. Okay, and she started gaining weight also. Do you think yes, that's significant? Yes, ma'am. Since we are dealing with anovulatory infertility, our most common or uh, symptom uh, diagnosis is PCOS. So, it is associated with the PCOS. So, even without PCOS, can a, a, a woman with um, high BMI, can she have an ovulation? Yes, ma'am. Obesity itself. Yes, just is. obesity. So, obesity itself or combined, isn't it? So, then you said now, my last two cycles, she had this typical history, isn't it? This is a very typical history. She had a uh, irregular cycle. Uh, and uh, what is it? Heavy bleeding during the second and third day of, during off periods. Mm -hmm. and yes. 
and okay she was asked to reduce weight and she was asked to take trapic tablets you yes, want to comment on that uh, it is a temporary message to control heavy bleeding at that time do you think it will be useful in a patient with this type of bleeding where do you give trapic where is trapic it is out of the preview of this but still mm. where is it's an antifibrinolytic so it can be used in aub of which uh, type of aub aub e or aub e it is it works mm -hmm. only in aub e AUBE. this is aub o okay. where you find that in anovulate bleeding mm -hmm. your trapic all these things are not likely to work so if you want to stop the bleeding what do you have to do suppose is progesterone. progesterone is the only thing that will work when you have a hormonal cause for the mm -hmm. bleeding okay yes continue uh, she has no history of acne hair loss or voice change no history of cold in or intolerance constipation can you just tell me what you were thinking of when you were so that i need not ask you acne yes, hair loss and change uh, of voice ma'am it is again features of hyperandrogenism and feature of virilization madam okay, good. to change of voice and hair loss and history of cold intolerance constipation uh, for uh, hypothyroid uh, hypothyroidism nipple discharge for hyperprolactinemia right. and hot flushes night sweats uh, dryness of vagina decreased sex drive all this for uh, premature ovarian failure menopausal yeah. symptoms ma'am uh, she has no history of extreme exercise or sudden weight loss in the near future and uh, there is no history of lower abdominal pain uh, backache painful coitus painful micturition or painful defecation Uh, all this uh, points to um, diagnosis of PID or endometriosis, which are other causes of infertility, infertility. which you need to rule out. Yes, okay. Uh, no history of fever with chills or vagina discharge again for PID Excellent. and postcoital bleeding for local lesions uh, or CA cervix. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there is no history of cough or evening rise of temperature, which to rule out TB. Uh, there is no uh, history of abdominal mass. mass or distension for ovarian tumors. So you said excessive, extreme exercise and sudden loss of Wait, what yes, are you thinking about? Uh, hypothalamic cause of anovulatory infertility, ma'am. Yes, uh, hypothalamic anovulation. I mean, the uh, patient is whenever the patient is not ovulating. These are also things that you do have to think of. Hypothalamic. Mm -hmm. would that be hypothalamic failure or hypothalamic dysfunction hypothalamic dysfunction dysfunction that's hypothalamic dysfunction when you get a hypothalamic failure that will come in your hypopituitary in those cases so can you rule out those causes you know you even though you mentioned about hot flushes night sweats dryness of vagina and hypo you know uh, hypopituitarism and all that uh, in this particular patient are they likely uh, from your history not likely not likely why madam. uh because she uh, used to have regular she is cycle. for the simple reason yeah. that she is getting bleeding mm -hmm. so a pa any patient suppose a woman is a girl is, or a woman is amenorrheic and then how will you know you give her progesterone mm -hmm. and she gets bleeding mm -hmm. what does that indicate estrogen is present in the body absolutely that means there is some amount of estrogen how much at least 40 picogram per ml of estrogen is present in the body and you have a patent outflow tract mm -hmm. isn't it so that is and when there is estrogen in the body the, the, it stands to reason that Uh, the upper to uh, what is it the hypothalamus pituitary and the gonads are okay huh. yes. so here also but this lady you need even without that she is getting spontaneous menstruation yes. so whenever a woman is having spontaneous menstruation for practical reasons you can rule out hypo uh, hypogonadotrophic and hypergonadotrophic yes. causes isn't it yes. and then you narrow it down to anovulation yes, yes. next i'll come to the partner's history ma'am yeah. there is no history of it's very important whenever you take a case of infertility that you should talk about the uh, partner also at least the history of the male partner is very very important you need not do an examination at the at your level but the past history is important good okay. uh, uh, he has no history of decreased sex drive no history of difficulty in erection or ejaculation there is no history of little or no semen after ejaculation there is no history of cloudy urine after ejaculation there is no history of loss of hair in the pubic area or armpits or there is no history of enlargement of breasts no mm. history of abnormal position of urethral opening or undescended testes there is no history of mums traumatic genital area or prior surgeries or chronic medication or radiation no history of swelling in the genital area there is no history of discharge from uh, penis or ulcers or any other lesions in the genital area there is no cough or evening rise of temperature so, so you are ruling out quite a lot of conditions yes, can you madam. just summarize what you are ruling out 1 2 3 4 uh, yes madam uh, i'll uh, pid again for the male uh, sexually transmitted diseases sexually diseases transmitted uh, sorry for uh, yeah, yeah. can go for the top congenital congenital, congenital causes uh, congenital causes absent testes absent testes, testes the client uh, felt all those things are ruled out is it yes. torquedism yes. traumatic and, causes mm. like torsion and all that yes. any and other mums. trauma uh, mums will come under infections any mm. other trauma it could uh, be also uh, surgery 